I'm not even going to get into that. Out. That's I have zero thought. Not not the bald fuck. The bald fuck was like, we don't play anyone in the preseason. Remember that? He's like, we're not playing oh, yeah. any of our starters. <laughs> right. And to see, that's one of the problems I had with him was he would never play his starters during the preseason. It's like, dude, and he's talking about building callus. Because I remember that was one of his fave phrases talking about yeah. this team need to build some callus. I'm like, how are you building callus if you're not playing the starters in preseason? Then when we the first game of the season, we sit up there and come out flat. And it's like, I wonder why. They right. didn't play in the preseason. I'll use another one of his phrases to respond. I just feel like he never understood the why. Maybe exactly. I always say that we don't know what yeah. the why is. Why yeah. It's like no, the why is you. You're the re- you're the one who doesn't understand. Everyone else can see it. Guys, this was a fourth man's dream. And, and like, look at me. I, I'm bald. Like, I'm totally for a bald white guy being the head coach of the Chicago Bears. I mean, it, it resembles me. And then they get a quarterback with a C at the end of his name. <laughs> Guys, I was in heaven. You know, I, I know it was S K Y and not S K I, but I mean, I I had such high hopes. But the second I saw Club Dub celebrating oh. a, a week oh. two or week three victory, like what the what what are you Man. doing? And still doing it the next year. What are you yes. doing? Oh, uh, it's just, the most important thing is that we all have fun. No, this is the NFL. <laughs> like this is this is the highest level of the sport. You have fun in Pee Wee. Football. Ah, man. It, 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 it was so evident that it was going to be a train wreck. And it was so evident that we were lucky to get the winner that we did. You sound better with it closer to you, like you just had it. One yeah, last sorry. Nagy uh, comment, if you could give me that. We were playing San Diego at Soldier Field, and they look, they just look awful in the first half. They're, they look terrible. The crowd's booing. They come out in the second half in an I formation and start running the ball and ultimately should have won the game. Pinheiro missed the kick to lose. But after the game, Matt Nagy, when they ran the ball so smoothly in the second half and, and, and should have won the game, he said, I was not brought here to run the I formation. He should have been fired on the spot. Right. If you – like, I always make this analogy. When Pat Riley went to the Knicks, he wasn't running showtime because he knew he didn't have the talent to play that offense. Right. So – he played, but Matt Nagy's one of these guys. He has a quote unquote system, and if the players don't ma- don't match it, he doesn't give a fuck. He's just going to force that yeah. system regardless because he's not cognizant enough to. He's too arrogant. Yep, I is agree. what I'm saying. He doesn't have the wherewithal to say I got to make adjustments to my system. No, it's their fault. They're the reasons who, they can't adhere to it. Mm-hmm. So that that his hubris. He's terrible, man. He's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to piggyback on what you guys said earlier about the club dub, I mean, after that that first season of it, okay, let it ride. But to Dan's point, to do it again the next year, are you serious? Stop. Stop yourself. Oh, my God. Like you're keeping this going? Seriously? Really? It's like, oh, my goodness, dude. What do you John think Gruden called? made fun of us in England. That should have been the end of it because Gruden started dancing and said, I don't have a disco ball, but, and, and that should have been the end of it. When they exactly. kicked our ass over there, that should have been the end of it. I, I remember watching um, something from NFL Films, and it was uh, about the Eagles and Patriots Super Bowl in the early 2000s. And the Eagles players were saying, man, we were so happy. It was media week. We had two weeks to sit there and talk to the media. And, and, you know, it's like fantasy land. They're they're sitting there, and they're all superstars. They've got campus in front of them. And and, and, and then they said the Patriots played, landed, and all these guys come out, just suit and tie, briefcase, emotionless, just another day at the office. Time to handle business. And the one we'll player, say, I forgot which one it was, but he's like, man, I just had a feeling in my gut, like, they're just ready for it, and we're not. It, it, it's too big for us. And it, it seemed like a regular season win was too big for Matt Nagy because he's getting the <laughs> club dubbing it up. Yeah. I'm telling Ridiculous. You, what's the expression? Act like you've been there before? 100% he did. Act like, did. Act like you've been there before. Yeah, he acted like he'd never been there. I mean, he got some victories, and you want to celebrate every victory? Are you serious? 
on an well, NFL I level. Love Walter Payton that. spikes, PJ. Think about that though. Uh, on an uh, NFL team celebrating every victory like they just won the Super Bowl. What? Come on, man. Come on. Walter Payton spike. Yeah. Walter Payton spike. The handing the ball to the lineman. Yeah. Or something, yeah. You know, it, it, it's tough so, because this so is the NFL that we're, we're talking about. What, what you should be doing is you should be literally thinking about the plays you miss. I, I know you guys probably have all seen the Netflix special, the quarterback special, but I, that's so real. Like, uh, you know, a lot of the Kirk Cousins clips in there. I'm the first one to tell you I don't want Kirk Cousins as my quarterback. But, uh, you know, he does do everything he needs to do in order to be the best he can be. He's just not better than some of the more physically gifted guys, but it takes a lot of work, you know, and, and a ton of work, a ton of concentration, a ton of communication. And um, there's plays left out on the field every single game, every yeah. single game. Right. So whether you win or you lose, like you should be constantly trying to focus on the things that you miss and, and that you didn't do well. And, and trying to get better, like you should be having conversations with, you know, your wide receivers or your running backs. Like, hey, I know we won, but on that third down in the third quarter, you know, I expected you to do this and you did this or whatever. Instead, Agreed. they got clubbed up. Agreed. Agreed. And it was a rumor that he would not even uh, go over the game film with the team to critique them. He would – I mean, one, one, one thing I loved about uh, Walsh, for the 49ers. The way he practiced was he would tell Montana to throw the ball like six inches in front of the player. And if you don't do it, you know, rep it until you do. To, to pursue perfection is the way you're supposed to coach. That way, when you get there, I mean, you may not get it. You may have to, you may in a game, throw the ball nine inches in front, but it's still catchable. But by you pursuing perfection like that, it's like, it makes you better as opposed to, oh, let me glory in this victory I have, even if we got lucky and won on a trick play, let's do this club dub instead of holding the guys accountable, making them better. That's how you coach, and he just has no concept. That's why I'm so happy with Eberflus, the fact that, like I said many times, to me, he's a real coach, period. He's a real coach. 